Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Circle Debate Podcast for our top five of the week for week nine. Once again, this is your host, I've been the devious one, alongside with the heroes of all heroes, Mr. Mike Lopez, the American hero. You can't go wrong with the hero of all time. And also, we have the killer of all killers. I saw him just kill him, push him anywhere. Watch your Twitter, folks, because he will kill it. That would be Josh Gilbert. And also, we have alongside ourselves Mr. Studio himself. He's the studio of all studios. <laughs> I got Mr. MGC, Mr. Matthew Karatekana. Oh, what? Uh, what? 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 That's how you feel? <laughs> this is like a, a to- automaton. It's like a, a scene, whatever. Uh-huh. Japanese. <laughs> nice. Awesome, awesome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today is our top five factions. Uh, so today we're going to go ahead and actually uh, talk about our top five factions today. So we're going to go ahead and start it off with... Mr. Killer. Let's do this. Whew. All right. Now, I was expecting to be picked number one. All <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. I got one. All right. Number, number five. Fuck it. Let's do it. Number five. The main event mafia. You know ooh, what I'm saying? Ooh. Give some love to the main event mafia, man. Yeah, Just you got to We got, uh, we got, we got the members of this group from Kurt Angle, Steen, Booker T, Scott Steiner, Kevin Nash. And then we know later on Samoa Joe and uh, Magnus. I believe Taz might have been even in the group as the manager or something for a bit. Yeah, he was. And you kind of got to count Charmel too. Uh, she was with uh, Booker T. But yeah, they debuted from from when they burst on the scene in October of 2008 uh, to when they ended in November of 2013. This this faction, whenever you talk about the greatest faction in TNA history or in Impact history, that's got to be one at the top of your list, the main event mafia, a group assembled of all world heavyweight champions, the whole fucking group, the original group. And even uh, Magnus would go on to win the world title in TNA before the group ended. So, I mean, all of it was world champion. Uh, You talk about, over 75 years of combined experience. Talk about uh, these guys, their feud with the front line. Remember that? Who was the front line? I'm trying to remember. remember. The front line was uh, AJ. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Which was pretty... for yeah. a little bit before he joined them. And then I believe Rhino might have been part of it. Yeah. You remember AJ. them beating down Bully Ray? Yeah, I remember that. Well, yep, I do recall that. And also... One of my favorite moments of the main event mafia, Booger T's out there calling a match. And then I think Kevin Nash or somebody's in there and they're starting to get the better of him. And Booger T comes out and he's like, he still got the, he's, he was calling this match and the match starts breaking up. And then Booger T runs down there and he's he got the microphone and he's still calling the match and he's calling his own fucking moves. And he's like, oh, look, look, Booger T, Booger T. Oh, he's about to stump his ass. <laughs> and then he starts kicking him. <laughs> like, oh, oh, Booker T's looking for the scissors kick. And then Booker T will hit the scissors kick. And it's like, damn, I've never seen anybody call their own moves while they're doing it. Shit was funny as fuck. <laughs> and then, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, June 2013, we know they, they came back for a little while as a face stay with a few with the aces and eights. And, but yeah, man, some of the great matches, I believe, out of this faction, when they was into it, we saw Kurt Angle into it with Sting in that empty arena match for the world title, which was a great fucking match. And it was. Um, yeah, and right before Sting got, I believe he got forced out. And then, thank God, later on, they got back together before it ended. But we saw the Legends title introduced as Booker T would become the Legends champion. We saw so many fucking great moments in TNA. And it all uh, surrounds this faction. To me, Main Event Mafia, 
greatest faction in Impact history, no doubt about it. So why not deserving of a top spot of the top five right there? Okay. And uh, I don't know if you guys remember MySpace, but, yeah, man, I used to have my MySpace. It was fucking – it was pimping, bro. I You could put the little gifs right on the wall. I had a gif of the main event mafia, like nice. all raising – all throwing a, throwing a sign up right there, all of them, bro. It was badass, bro. <laughs> and uh, – and get to number four, man. Let me get to number four. Number four. Yeah, man. Much love to the main event mafia, though. Number four, I'm gonna go with the NWO. I mean, Ooh. this group. This Ooh, group right yeah. Here, yeah. This group right here. This group right here. To this day, to this day, you still see people wearing these shirts. You know what I'm saying? You might see a few people wear the X shirt from the past or Austin shirts. But more than anything, you see the NWO shirt still being rocked to this day. That's how big this group was. I mean, let's see. Uh, it started out. Remember how it started out with Hulk Hogan joining Hall and Nash at uh, Bash at the Beach? Now, there was a uh, – then after that, after they took over – WCW, like no other faction has ever done any other promotion before or since. So, I mean, they have to be on the fucking list with uh, a total of 62 members. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Holy <laughs> crap. Did y'all know that? Oh, uh, no, yeah, I had no idea. They had I NWO know. Japan, too, because they had Ricky Chono. Yeah, yeah, that I mean, counts that, too. That counts yeah. that, too. Masahiro Chono is the leader of NWO Japan. Yeah, oh yeah. God. Uh, and also, you got to thank this group gave us heel Hulk Hogan, Hollywood Hogan. We mm -hmm. got to see Hulk Hogan become a heel for the first time. And that was a big thing at the time. That would be for like this generation if we saw Cena or Roman turn heel. This was a big thing, man. And I remember growing up as a kid saying this shit, man. This, this was epic, man. Um, even if you didn't watch Nitro, you would hear about it, you know. You would hear about what they're doing over there. And not only did uh, they take over WCW, uh, they took over all kinds of places, man. They even had their own fucking logo, the NWO logo, on a NASCAR race car driven by who they thought was going to be a great driver at the time, Kyle Perry. <laughs> <laughs> he turned out, he turned out <laughs> But they still had it, though, bro. They still had it. Dennis Rodman's NWO. They also yeah. had, they had NWO pay-per-views. Like, NWO sold out. And what was it? Uncensored, That's right. too? That's right. They had yeah. their own pay-per-view. They had their own fucking pay-per-view. Uh, and also, we, we, we had the NWO black and white. Then we had the NWO give us the birth of the red and black. The fucking wolf pack. Wolf pack. The Ooh. reason why the reason why the club and all them throwing up that right there these days. You know what I'm saying? The two sweet became the wolf pack. Sweet. And whoop, whoop, whoop. Bro, man. <laughs> the end up the black and white NWO, great fucking theme. Don't the turn your back in the wolf pack. Wolf pack. You the might wolf pack wind theme. up in a body, in body bag. bag. Yeah. Even it was even better, bro. It's like, how do you top this theme? And then it was even it was even as good, or if not as as much better. Um, of course, then we saw the NWO. Even we talked about them; they had their shit going on in New Japan as well. But oh no, Chono was running the show. That's right. Um, and then they they we see Vic, Vince McMahon in his little cheer. He said, "I'm gonna inject some cores in." Into my own, my own creation. <laughs> I'm gonna he turns it. around. He turns around and it's the NWO logo on the chair. Like, now, I'm going to inject poison. It's the now, WWF. It's a good impression, man. <laughs> <Benito there. laughs> the NWO. Oh. <laughs> Damn you, man! About maybe spit my beer out again. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm telling you, bro. It's Jimi Hendrix right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I watched a documentary on him, and I heard that tune, and I'm like, damn, that's where the NWO got that from. Yeah, yeah. Jimi Hendrix. Nobody knew about that. 
Yeah, but yeah. Uh, let, let's be honest, man. NWO's run in WWE wasn't what it should have been because Vince, you know how he is about things he didn't create. But damn, he could have went so far with this thing, man. It could have been, could have been so much more, man. But I think the NWO, who we all know, they they were they were they're the 2020 Hall of Famers. They're yet to be inducted. Um, they're just going to duck four members, but hopefully they get inducted before the end of this year's out. And I mean, we'll find out. This faction right here will forever be one of the greatest factions of all time, and I think we can all agree on that. That's why you put them at number four for <laughs> life. Uh, that's right. That's right. And uh, let me see. Yeah, yeah. Now, from this faction right here, the NWO, you know, it started in New Japan, if I'm not mistaken, then WCW, then we've seen it in WWE. But the NWO, they, they sparked – did it not start in New Japan? But right no. It was it, the idea. The idea. idea. Because the idea started. it was called yeah, the, the, I, the IWF or New – yeah, there was that because that was uh, Antonio Noki's uh, before they they, they uh, converged together. Remember, Inoki had his own uh, promotion, which was that one. Yeah, was no, I, every, I, every time I, WUF. Every time no, the I UWFI up. invasion of and uh, New Japan. Yeah, the UWFI. Very, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That was Inoki. Yeah, so, so every time I bring up the fucking NWO starting in. Um, WCW, somebody will correct me and say, no, nah, it actually got the idea or something from New Japan. But either way... It wasn't NWO, Japan. though. It was like something Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's true. But, but also, this goes to my other uh, number three, I believe, isn't it? Yes. Okay, so they sparked the idea for this whole thing that's still going today. The Bullet Club. The Bullet Club, bro. So, I mean, if it wasn't for NWO, I think we see no aces and eights, and I think we see no bullet club. So, wherever the fucking idea came from or not, WCW made it larger than life, let's be honest. And uh, let's talk about the bullet club now. Formed in 2013 with Prince Devitt, who we know as Finn Balor now. And uh, he was the leader with Carl Anderson, Bad Luck Fale, and Tamatanga, and they formed a hill stable of foreigners in New Japan pro wrestling, and they dominated, bro. They beat down every fucking body, and it catapulted Devitt to the main event scene of New Japan. That was when he's turned his back on his buddy, Taguchi. Yeah. Taguchi. He yeah. turned his back on him on that. Yeah, yeah, he turned his back on his buddy and everything. And then, but by the end of 2013, the Young Bucks and Gallows joined up. So, I mean, and and at the end of 2013, the Bullet Club held both IWGP Junior Heavyweight and the IWGP uh, Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships, uh, while also having conquered three of. New Japan Pro Wrestling's five annual tournaments. So, I mean, like I said, it launched Devitt's career to another level. And then when he left, AJ Styles came in. We already know him as a big star from Impact and TNA uh, and all around the world. But to me, this Bullet Club set him even higher on the bar for his arrival when he finally got to WWE. This is what made him more valuable, the Bullet Club. Uh, of course, he won the, the IWGP World Heavyweight title over there. Uh, you know, and, and, and it was like, it was like he became a bigger star and then winning the IWGP World Heavyweight title made him the bigger star. And then in the following June of that year, members of that group would also hold the, the IG, w, IWGP Intercontinental Never open weight, six man tag, and and I believe the uh the other title, the US title, I believe. They they even held that over time. So Kenny Omega being the yeah, first they, they, yeah. they got that over time when Omega took over. And Omega's another one that became an even bigger star because of the Bullet Club. So just think about how many stars that Bullet Club made, 
how many guys they made even bigger, or if not, if they wasn't already big, they made them into made a bitters from right there from the start. Mm -hmm. The current leader, Jay White, I'm a big fan of him. I think Jay White's going to be, like, another big one, too. I really, I exactly. love it particularly all. So. Switchblade, switchblade. Switchblade, breathe. With the switch all blade. right. Yeah. But he needs to change that finishing move, man. Change it. <laughs> change that shit. He's like, you and Bray Wyatt do the same shit. No. I like the, I like the, he does the mood a lock. I think I like that. I like him using submission moves better than, than slams. He seemed, he's good at, like, making people suffer in matches. He's a good, like, beat down and terrorize kind of, you know. I did, uh, Maybe if it was, like, a karate kick or a, or a submission move or something. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. My apologies. Continue. Yeah. All right. So, my number two, I mean, some people would rank them as high on that list and on their list, and they, they don't get really talked about that much as a stable. But to me, when these guys came in, they changed. They changed a lot of shit for the good or the worst. And I'm talking about the radicals. I'm, <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I, 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 I just want to apologize to people. I don't mean disrespect. It's just. When I was younger, I would laugh at Perry Saturn because he can't give me a straight face. I'm sorry. <laughs> I could have hauled it. I apologize. No discrimination. He just couldn't give me a straight face. When Perry I Saturn eating straight, mustard. When I, when I, when I, I remember like him, <laughs> Perry Saturn eating mustard at some point. Yeah, he got he got punished for doing something fucking wrong in a match. I think he tried to uh, beat up a job or some shit or beat up somebody and um, – he got in trouble for that. They gave him this gimmick, but with the mop, but he made it work. But uh, yeah, let me talk about the the radicals, man. At first, you know, and I don't even have to look at my notes for this because I know they started out as a group in WCW. Uh, first, it, it was I believe it was Benoit, it was Saturn and Malenko with Shane Douglas, and then when their contracts got up. They told Eddie that they was going as well. And uh, Eddie even told Chavo, Ch no, Chavo was like, should I come too? And Eddie's like, nah, you stay here, man. You'll have a bigger chance if you stay here because there's going to be too many guys over there. With us leaving, you'll have a better spot here. But, yeah, I guess WWE didn't want Shane Douglas after his shitty run as Dean Douglas. There's a story uh, about that, but go ahead yeah, continue. Yeah. Yeah, that's a story for another day. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, I just – as a kid, man, I remember the Radicals sitting ringside for a match between uh, the – I believe it was the New Age Outlaws, Al Snow, and Steve Blackman. New Age Outlaws versus Snow and Blackman. And uh, I believe something happened where somebody that was in that match accidentally hit or done something to the Radicals then the Radicals interfered into the matchup. Real beat them down. Yeah, beat them down. Uh, we see Guerrero do the frog splash for the first time in WWE. We see Benoit with the cross spot, the, the, the flying headbutt. And uh, that day right there, whether you like it or not, for the good or for the worse, it changed WWE history because that was the beginning of what would go on to happen uh, with their careers. And we, we we know we know Malenko, he should have got a better run. And Saturn, he's a hell of a worker too, so he probably deserved better. Um, but yeah, these guys right here, you got four great wrestlers, and you got them all in one fucking group, all jumping ship in the midst of the Monday Night Wars. And not long after they jumped ship, not even like maybe a year later, WCW was out of business. I'm not saying it was because they dumped, but kind of convenient right there, bro. Uh, but while in the group, Perry Saturn, one time the uh, European champion, two times the hardcore champion, Benoit, two times intercontinental champion while in the group, Guerrero, two times European champion, one time IC champion while in the group. And uh, Malenko, he held, that, he held that light heavyweight title. So every member of the group held gold 
while they was in the group. Uh, so, I mean, not long after their move to WWE, WCW was over, but these guys right here, I mean, we know what happened. Maliko, he goes on to retire. Harry Saturn, we don't ever hear from him again. But I found out later that he got on some shit or whatever. Yeah. We'll talk about that. Yeah. But, but I hear he's straightened up now. But so shout out to him. But we know Guerrero and Benoit, man, they went on to take over from Rock, for Rock, and Austin. When they left, it was like the that ruthless aggression era. They was two ruthless of the aggression. Yeah, they was two of the leaders of that era. And to me, even though WWE won't replay it. They won't show it. That moment at WrestleMania between Guerrero and Benoit hugging in the ring, both world champions, that's still the best WrestleMania moment for me. I cried, ain't gonna lie. I cried. Yeah, that the was a hell of a moment. The timing was right because Guerrero and Benoit, like, they've been grinding, they've been grinding since, like, the late 80s, early 90s. Like, like I'm yeah, like, like, stuck with them. In before they both became world champions. Oh yeah, they've been doing it so long. Like, like I th even then I'd say, even in like the late '90s, I think they were already overdue. That's like you know they were already. It know, just it it, yeah. it just honestly it was just a this was the perfect fit, and I think for that to happen out of that group was a perfect fit. I wish Malenko could have used him better. Yes, yeah, I agree. Because yeah. uh, Malenko, remind you, he's a man of a thousand holds. He did. He's the one that pretty much gave Benoit the crimper to cross face. Oh, what should I use? Why don't you use this? Oh, I'll take it. All right. And Di Malenko is a great mindset in, um, in, about you know the art of professional wrestling. Second he's generation. A, he's exactly his dad is also is a great pro wrestler. Another or one. Malenko. Mm -hmm. There you go. So Malenko would have imagined it. Mike, you know you got you got the hero <laughs> behind you. A Kurt Angle and Dean Malenko match would have been a, another great oh, match. Man. Oh yes, that would be a, another a fantasy match to see. We I saw mean, the we saw Bret Hart and Dean Malenko, but that would have been hella dope to see Kurt Angle versus Dean Malenko. Man, I would have okay, loved man, it. Do y'all think? Do you think? I saw this other night. We was watching a uh, NXT. Uh, and I remember who I wrote down on my factions right here. And Roddy Strong kind of reminds me of Dean Malenko, maybe a little bit. Hmm. He's good. He's good. He he, he kind of reminds me of him. I'm not going to lie. Just a little bit. Uh, Can you say it? Can but, you say it? but does like, he have a thousand holds, though? That's a good, he's yeah. A, he's got a shitload of backbreakers. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, but yeah, they had to be right up there because that group, when they debuted, man, it changed the history of WWE. We know what happened. I, I actually just uh, just the other day was watching that that uh, moment, that match, that you know when they came in. Yeah. Oh man, that, that yeah, that's one of the best fucking moments ever. That and the moment between Benoit and Guerrero at WrestleMania, it sucks. Mm that you never get to see them again. And that's one of the reasons why they don't never get mentioned in the top factions uh, when WWE does a video about it. They're not going to break it can. up. They can't. They can't. They can't. You already know why. They can't Yeah, I know, I know why. I know why. But, you know. Yeah, they can. But, I but wish you could. We could bring it up here. We could give them their due. And that's what I'm going to do, man. You know, whatever happened later down the line, you know, happened. But at the same time, when they debuted was the start, of a whole new fucking era in WWE, man. They, they, Guerrero and Benoit took the ball and ran with it. Let's be honest, man. They went there hard. Uh, so moving on to number one. Uh oh. Damn. Drum roll, Mike. Drum roll, Mike. Hey. There you go. Let's see, y'all. Uh, evolution is a mystery. What? Ah. what? I mean, you got. You got wait, a, wait, a, wait, 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 wait. Oh, you lucky, yeah. you lucky I was drinking my beer. Are you <laughs> fucking kidding me? You chose. I, I've been waiting till you see what mine is. Ooh. Oh, my, oh gonna, my goodness. You're going to lose your crap when you see oh my number God. one. I'm gonna <laughs> say, explain to me why. Evolution, I'm telling you why. Uh, Blair. 
from their debut in 2003, man. This group right here, it was originally supposed to be Flair, Triple H, Orton, and Ginger Act. Yeah, they, that to, they got they waited. They, they waited for Batista to come back after his injury, man. To, Which I'm to glad. Group like he was supposed to. Yeah, because it went the way it should have. Could you imagine if Ginger Act would have been in the group? Horrible. Him and Orton, they wanted to joke around too much when they was together. So they had to break them up, break them up. Uh, but Batista was the better fit. Batista became the muscle, and he learned a lot from being in this fucking group. Orton was the young third-generation guy that uh, with so much potential. And, I mean, Triple H, he was the leader. I mean, he was, he was, the, he was the then, which at the time was the now. And then you had Ric Flair, who was the past. So it was the perfect example of evolution. It, what Triple H said in his promo, what you see in this ring right now is the perfect example of evolution you will ever see. And damn, let's give a shout out to their theme song as well by Motorhead. Evolution was a mystery. Y'all know y'all jammed out of that one a bunch of times. I know oh, I, I did. I did. That's for Lemmy. For Lemmy, man. Lemmy Rest is... in peace, Lemmy. Yeah, yeah, Lemmy. I would play that shit and walk into the room in like a three-piece suit <laughs> and just like, just like. <laughs> See, I would, I would wear a three-piece suit, walk in with that song playing, and just walk slowly. Oh no, that, that that's gonna be that's gonna be us. When we all together for the first time, believe me. Yeah, that's yeah. gonna be us. Us four. I yeah, it's gonna be that way. We're gonna play that song. Because we're gonna oh. wear suits, man. You know me, I wear like Mike's uh, suit. Uh, I'm always, uh, but Mike has bro, to wear a suit. Bro, wow, not, you, you're, gonna, you're gonna have to do it one time, Mike. Oh, I love wearing suits, but uh, more on that later. Aha, uh -huh, there you go. You hear the first I mean, you hear All right, back back to the number one pick. <laughs> Yeah, All right, so they right. dominated Raw 2003 and 2005, and also during 2007 and 2014, they came back for a little while. So uh, they won all the gold Armageddon 2003, the night that they won. Triple H won the world title back from Goldberg. Randy Orton beat RVD for the Intercontinental title. Batista and Flair won the tag team titles from the Dudley Boys uh, in a tag team turmoil match. Also, uh, you know, Triple H, when he turned on Randy Orton uh, after Orton beat Benoit for the title, uh, it seemed like Triple H got a little jealous. And I love that fucking storyline. And the build to it was so fucking great. When Orton was a – he was the youngest world champion. You, you remember Batista's holding him up. And then Triple H goes like that. And it's it goes down for Orton. And, of course, Orton loses the title not long after that. But Orton, man, he also got a pretty good – I liked his theme song he got after he broke up with the group, too. Hey, nothing you can say. Hey. <laughs> he actually hates that song. Yeah, he hates that song. <laughs> but I wish they would bring it back for the Legend Killer gimmick. Since nah, he it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work with him. It does. It, I, I remember his first uh, theme. I his first – Yeah, but see, but everybody used that. Every – every uh, Like every rookie. Rookie performer sound of music. Even when John Cena would remember he had to do like, oh, like, No, John Cena was like I would use those on my create a character. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then uh yeah. So then it would come full circle also as uh Batista, man. He he won the rumble and uh we know he heard he overheard Triple H and Flair saying, we need to get his ass to go to SmackDown. You know, he's so stupid or some shit. They talk shit about him. And then uh, they go out there to sign a contract. He's to holding up that SmackDown contract. He puts that thumb down. And then Batista, when he put that thumb down, you see Flair and Triple H like, like that. And then Batista, the animal, is unleashed. And, I mean, that, that WrestleMania, WrestleMania 21, because of that build-up with Evolution and him being a part of that group so long, it also made him a star just like it made Randy Orton. 
You know, we saw him win the world heavyweight title. Yeah. At WrestleMania 21, Batista Mike, became a main Mike man. has the world heavyweight championship. Big right gold now. belt. And that Re- gold belt right there looked fucking great on Batista, man. I, Did it I, not? Honestly, we'll have another time about that. But I do love that belt, by the way. That, that belt is. That's my favorite it, fucking title, it bro. It made its debut with, in the Ric Flair versus Ricky Steamboat mat, it, match in Chicago. I, that, I actually downloaded that match on Kazaa like a long time ago. And <laughs> That's a great like. match, by the way. Yeah, Ricky Steamboat has like red, green trunks. And yep. it, looked like, it, it looked like the match was filmed in like a hotel. Like, no, like it a, look, no, it looked like it, but yeah. Uh, it was like a great a ballroom. match. Ballroom. Mm-hmm. But yeah, anyways, man, uh, get back to it. Uh, wrap it up right quick. Uh, yeah, this group right here, man. When it was when it, right now as it is, I mean, all four members of this group are going to be Hall of Fame. You know, we we know Orton's going to be in the Hall of Fame as well. We know Batista's about to go in the Hall of Fame. Flair's already in two times. Triple H is already in one time. We know he's going to go in again by himself. Uh, yeah, so too. you got. You got Ric Flair, 16-time World Heavyweight Champion. You got Triple H, Triple H, 14 times World Heavyweight Champion. Randy Orton, 13 times World Heavyweight Champion. And his career ain't even close to being over yet. He signed a five-year deal. And then you got Batista, six-time World Champion. And we know if he would have stayed, he would have got more titles too. Nah. I mean, I don't know. Nah. I don't know. He might nah. have. Nah. But it makes I, I wouldn't doubt it. it. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it either, but uh, it makes sense how he let how he, he left. It, it makes sense for me. I got two big. Know, oh, sorry, you go. Oh, I didn't. Yeah. So, um, a lot of people might disagree with this, but I know Evolution came to be because they got the idea from the Four Horsemen. But to me, Evolution is better than the Four Horsemen ever was. <laughs> Tell me you did not just say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you did not just say that. Booker T. Wait a minute. Are you, okay. Tell me. Hold on, man. Tell, oh, you know what? Give me a minute. I need to get some fresh hair. I don't know you didn't say that. You have to transform to Booker T. <laughs> Tell me. No. Hey, the four horsemen, the four horsemen, man, they had – so many other members. So many, so many other members. Oh, no, no, no. You know what? So I'm gonna call. Other, I'm others. gonna call my next five. Now I'm next. The hell with this shit. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Hey, well, no, before no. you start, Ivan, I want to say two things about Randy Orton that will kind of blow you. Oh, so Paul Heyman said that Randy Orton is like if you had to choose three wrestlers to push to the top, and then Paul Heyman just said Randy Orton, Randy Orton, Randy Orton, like three times, like. Paul Heyman, like, worships the ground that Randy Orton walks on and all this. And then another funny fact about Randy Orton, I met his aunt in Las Vegas while at the roulette table. It was so random. It was like, oh, yeah, I'm Cowboy Bob's younger sister. I'm like, what? Yeah, I'm Randy Orton's, <laughs> I'm Randy Orton's aunt. How are you doing? Like, so apparently Randy Orton's aunt is a roulette table dealer. She's pretty cool. So my dad was playing roulette. And wow, he was the dealer. Bro, so. my cousin met Randy Orton backstage, and he got to go backstage, and he said that Randy Orton was smoking a cigarette. Mm. I was like, I didn't well, yeah, he, well, Randy Orton was. I a, didn't was a, smoke. Yeah, Randy Orton was a big heavy smoker. You could YouTube it, YouTube, YouTube him, and he actually went for a fan to get an autograph. Said he, he was like, "Can I get a cigarette?" And a fan gave him a whole pack. Oh, you can keep it. Oh, thanks, man. Boom. But he stopped already. Obviously, that was a young version of Randy Orton during his young primary. Man, you I uh, cannot believe the shit of what Aye, you man. said. Because uh, look at all, what all they done on you their know, own. You know what? I, oh my God. Oh. You know, did 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 uh did Arn Anderson win all those world titles? You know, did Tully win a bunch of world titles? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, you know what? Let's hear it. I am curious to hear what Ivan has to say. I want Jesus to too. Let's hear Christ. that top Let's five. hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear that top five, uh, Ivan. <laughs> well, first of all, you know, my number five, right? My number five, five to one, all right? My number five will have to be, for me, would be 
DX, of course. You can't go wrong with uh, DX. Uh, Come on, uh, man. No, 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 no. From the original. You can't go wrong with these generations. Hold on, hold on. There, there you go. go. There you go. There it is. You can't go wrong with DX, bro. You, you, you can, I, I, I had to not, bro. You can't, you can't go wrong with DX at all when it was obviously the original four, which was obviously Shawn Michaels, China, with Triple H and Rick Root. They made a run, obviously. Sean Waltman came in, obviously, X Pac, and then obviously the New Age Outlaws later on. And that was, I mean, that was a great, great fashion. And they turned the attitude era around, honestly. When you they guys, did, um, like, what do you are? Is the does the click by itself count as a as a? It could, yeah, 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 absolutely, it does. But see, that's behind the scenes era. Though. It yeah. just this one's more. That'd be like was out, four horse women. This though, is like right? this is like more out in public. This is more a public figure that gave the idea. You saw they were the first ones to fucking doing having junior high school kids like us back in the era doing the suck it. I mean, that's that's guilty. Yeah, but guilty too, brother. You know it. You know it. <laughs> it's like we're guilty of that because we had that, you know, back in the attitude. You can't say no to that. So they have to be in my number five. Oh, they def they definitely deserve to be up there. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, they're my number five. Uh, my number four would be, um, you know what? My number four would actually be. Uh, you know. Yes, I am. Nation of Domination. Oh, yes. shit. We I are the nation. nation. The domination. Because you know what? You have to, they, and that's one thing people didn't catch either. Right now, what is going on with this prejudice world right now? Ron Simmons. And, and remind you that Ron Simmons was Damn. The first, Damn. He was Damn. the first <laughs> African-American world heavyweight champion. First one that did it. You know, the He's first one good. that did it. And he was damn good. Damn. And I like, I, I damn like how, good. And I like how how it all started. And I like because I think if you realize that before the attitude ever was occurring at that time, it kind of brought that. It was still that WWF type of like uh, funny style, clown style. You remember? It, like he kind of like was bringing that attitude back. Was bringing that attitude. Was pretty growing. Don't get me wrong. DX brought it more exposure to it, but I feel that uh, Nation of Domination brought that, and then when they brought along The Rock, Mark Henry, and then with Amin Johnson, like, I, that was enjoyable, too. I loved it. You know, and the, obviously, I always wonder what, why is it, why is it not Amin Johnson in the Hall of Fame? He should be in the Hall of Fame. I mean, if you guys could disagree with me or not, what? I he, Amin, Amin Johnson, Johnson should be in the Hall of Fame. He should be. Uh, no disagreements. You mean here. you mean by himself? I I think so. he deserves it by himself. Why not? Why? I don't think he, so, bro. I think he does. Yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of credentials that people don't give him. To, you know. I might would put him in. I de definitely they need to put the nation of domination in as a group one day. Well, yes. I, 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 you, yeah. have, you have to induct the rock. Well, maybe you don't have to induct the rock first. No. You know? They didn't triple eight. So no. I don't know. Yeah, but the nation, the nation needs to be, you know, inducted. Yeah, that's my number four. So, you know, obviously my number three. Oh, baby, you can't go wrong with number three, which is, you know, the Hart Foundation, man. Come on. Ooh. You can't go wrong with Bret Hart. Bret, Bret Hart, obviously Brian Pillman. Jim, the Edmund I Hart, British Bulldog, and Owen Hart. That was the – if it wasn't for them bringing that country-to-country country heel, they did a great job of doing it. It's so tragic because yeah. the majority of them are, aren't here anymore. There's only one left. There's only, only yeah. Bret Hart. Only you know? Bret. Only Bret. And yeah, happy That's birthday, by the way. Your birthday was, you know, just a couple of days. And happy birthday, Bret. You're one of my favorites. You come out, man. You're like one Which of my favorites, man. Yesterday? Yeah, a couple days ago. Yeah, a couple days ago. A couple days ago. You're right. Right here. Hey, let me see. With sunglasses with the World Championship. This is 1983 custom. Brett to hit my heart with the Heart Foundation, blue and black. Yep. Love it. Enjoy it. But um, I wish they would have adulted all of those as a group, but we know why they couldn't. But I mean, they 
instead they had done no, the tag team. They, they only they did their Jimmy Hart, didn't they? just uh, just uh, just Anvil and and uh, and Brett. That's it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Not um not um Owen. Not Brian, not, not Brian Pimmon or Owen or David. David Boy's supposed to be by himself this year, but what she's oh, supposed to right. be by himself this year. So that's another one that you know that, that's. He should be at the, um, but it's not gonna happen. We already know why. We already talked about that, obviously, in the previous episode of the Dark Side of the Ring one. So we understand why it's not gonna happen, which is I respect that. I'm not gonna go ahead and get more details. Out. So that's what my number three. My number two would be Los Ingrales. De Japón. Tetsuya Naito. Naito, baby. Tetsuya Naito. Sonata. Bushi. Shingo. Tagagi Shingo. Hiromu. Ivo. Sonata. And Hiromu Takahashi. That's your number three? That's my no. That's my number. No, that's my number two. Okay, okay. Los Ingobernables de Japón. Yeah, that's my number two, bro. Like, you wow. can't go wrong with that. L I J. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. I You're loved right. them. I loved them. I like how how Nilo started building that. How he started was a, eh, you know, how he started one by one, how he did it. And what I love about Nilo the most, which is why I'm, I'm a big fan of him, is how he rebuilt his character because when. It, before he started doing all that, remind you that how he became Los Ingronables, he came from Mexico. It came over there from CMML, which you get from Rush, from Rush. And also, I, nobody knows this. What do you think? People need to understand why Andrea does this tranquilo. You know what that means is that he's doing it for Ingronables de Japón and the Mexico. Sombra Mexico. Andrade. La Sombra, because Andrade was known as a Sombra. And and Sinomo, and Consejo Mundial de Lucha Libre. So people need to understand that Andrade does this, and Selena, Selena Vega should know why. You know, Andrade does it for a reason because of his fellow brothers, for Rush, for Dragon Lee, for you know La Bestia. You know, he does it for them. So it, it originated from Mexico, but Nido Nido was really was brought in in Los Ingobernables, and then he. He populated it and he so he ran with it and he did it with New Japan. So when he was he went back to New Japan with a different character, different everything, that's when he started bringing in how he brought in Bushi, how he brought in um, Ido, he brought in Sanada, and you know then they brought in uh, talk, you know Hiromu, and then Hiromu got hurt and they brought in Shingo after that. So it was like you know because you know. He almost got his neck was broken by who? By his rival, which in reality, if they're supposed to be like homies, it's Dragon Lee. Dragon Lee and them, because they're both, they're Ingronables. But he, you know, they have a rivalry, which is a long story, and Matt will tell you that. But he broke his neck, and so they had to replace him, and they brought in Shingo. When they brought in Shingo, that's when the world was shocked like, what? You brought in Shingo? Nobody expected it, and I loved it. And these guys were running the whole shit for year for years uh, in New Japan. They had the never wage, never over, you know, never open weight championship. They had even the, the six man over there as well. They had the junior heavyweight championship. And you know, even though Naito hated the Intercontinental, but he wanted the big, the big one. He wanted the IWGP heavyweight champion. You know, he wanted it so bad. And you could tell that Naito did not give a shit about the Intercontinental Championship. He turned like trash. He'll throw it around like he wouldn't prestige it. Doesn't mean shit to him because he wanted the big one. And now he got it. And now he got the big one. And we'll see what happens in this tournament. And it's going to be, I'm looking forward to see what will happen in the New Japan Cup. Uh, who's going to face Naito? But yes, that's Ingronables de Japón. That's my number two. My number one, since you brought him up, which is, yes, the Four Horsemen, baby. You cannot go wrong. You can't, you can't. 
You can't. How dare you? How dare you to not give what credit where it's due to a faction that provided how what how first of all remind you how evolution looks, okay? I, I, I get your point. Oh, well. Wait, horse women or horse men? Horse yeah. men. Four OG, horse OG. men. Oh, okay. OG four horsemen. Obviously. Uh, Ivan, well, which, Rick, which Rick Flair, you... Rick Flair was in both groups, though, so. Because, Rick, I, because, I, 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 I guess like who's, his... or, okay, remind yourself, who, who was Triple H ever wrestling? Rick Flair. Thank you. Why? Because he liked the four oh, horsemen. No, I said, okay, I said they got it. They got it from yeah. the four horsemen. Exactly, but you can't I say they did it better. Became, no, you oh, cannot compare that. You cannot compare though. that. You cannot compare that. You cannot compare that. Hell no! If it wasn't for the four horsemen, there won't be none of these factions. First of all, Ivan, if it which, wasn't. Which theme song you prefer the the OG Horseman theme or Both. the last WCW theme I think the original one is better more than the, the -na 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 -na. Yeah. yeah I like that -na 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 -na. one I think that one was better but definitely you can't say that shit how dare you to say that shit? Reba because look, because all, look, no, look. no disrespect to Arn and Tully and all Well they had they had they Jeff never, Jarrett they and they had Brian Pillman World title Oh also, man you come they, up had, with they, they had Sting and they had Jeff Jarrett, but at different times. They, they made the group look bad when they added people, other people. Like, keep it with the original, man. What are you adding? Well, the they had house? no choice. Art had to retire. They had you know, Art had to But in you know, the stable. Tony Blatchard also was a mysterious when they retired. Ric Flair wanted to keep it alive, but they chose certain individuals that were, like, okay with it. But it, it shouldn't have been, I agree on some that uh, did not I, work. I I agree They're with somebody. They're still up there. They're still up there, right up there. But I but think the original the, for me, the original, the original, the original four. For me, is the is always the original five. Excuse me, not four. It's five. They've they've had other champions in the group. They've had Sting. They've had Lex Luger. They'd have Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, they have a lot. They have I'm, had not, Brian I'm, I'm away from that. I'm more. I'm more. I'm more. The original, like original. The original though, one, like which a, is. Tony Blanchard, Art Anderson, J.J. Dillon, who was the manager. Ole, Rick An Flair, Ole Anderson. Ric Flair, Ole Anderson. And then after that, they brought in T.A. Magnum. And then they brought in Blackjack Mulligan. Like, those seven for me, how the way, if you go back and look on the history, how they made it happen, you see how Mike's carrying that belt? They make that belt prestigious, even with Ric Flair just being a champion, but everybody else being a tag team champion, a United States championship, or a television champion. They made the title prestigious. They're the ones that created suits. They're the ones that, that wear, wear the, the Rolexes and oh, everything. Yeah, yeah. They're okay. It all okay. It all so, yeah. But, time, but they, time were, they were the hottest. But they were the hottest heels in that era. And because people saw that, oh, we should start wearing suits. Start wearing everything else. When Ric Flair implemented, because we're going to be wrong, Triple H helped Ric Flair to get his mojo back, and he did. And Ric Flair, that's when he's like, yeah, what are we going to do with Evolutions? They didn't choose this guy. Ric Flair says it himself, and Triple H too, they both agreed, I like this guy. He has potential. They had I like ben, this guy. They had Benoit like and Malenko too. Yeah. Like before the re they were rappers, yeah, they were yeah. horsemen too. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I'd, say, you, you, like, I'd say they probably I'm have more champions. Legend, bro. I'd I'm say made four made horsemen. A lot of Four, Four Horsemen probably has more champions in it than Evolution because you've, you've got Benoit, Malenko, Sting, Lex Luger, Jeff Jarrett. Like, I don't know they, about all the titles, though, bro. Yeah, those, think, for those me, guys all won world championships. I, for me, it's that for me, it was never about the titles. For me, it was about how the formality of the Four Horsemen introduced to factions to begin with. And, yeah, made it, and, and, sure. and, and made they it, the and made it, and they laid the foundation. Exactly. Out. That's why you, I agree you, on that. That's but I'm what I'm saying. saying. Like, I'm that's saying, like, I'm saying. in 20, 20, 25 years from now, when you look back on evolution, just like people look back on the four horsemen, you're going to look and see, look back and people's going to see how great they really was. Right now, we don't see that. A lot of people don't see that because it, it didn't happen that long ago. It, it wasn't 20 years ago yet. So, I mean, when this shit, 20 years from now, or whatever it is, you're going to look back. The people that grew up watching Evolution are going to grow up. I mean, they're going to be thanking, you know, later on in life, they're going to tell you that, the, that Evolution was oh, just no. as good. I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with that, but you cannot say they did it better. 
That's one thing you cannot say that. Because it is – no, you cannot. You cannot say that because it's like – Nobody cut a promo better than Flair. But you got to remember, Flair was also part of Evolution. So, I mean, like – and also, also, this Evolution group made – of all world champions, not at first, but they built Orton and 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 Batista up to well, be. You're you're, you're talking you're you're talking about titles. I'm not talking about titles. I'm talking about the formation, how it began. That's what I'm talking about. You're, you're judging based on the all four of them became world champions. I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm going based upon that how. It began because of a world champion, because of a, a, a U.S. champion or, or tag team champions or anything else. How it began, the attitude, the like the, you know, the, come on, man, the pimp, and ball, pimp is going around. Like, what's but, up? But did, you know, but did, shit but like did, that. But did not, um, but did not. Who else did horsemen start? Tell me who else four, did it. Who didn't else four did horsemen, it? Didn't Four Horsemen start in uh, Jim Crockett for no, promotion? Yeah, Jim Crockett, yeah, which is W, which was also World Class Championship. Because remember, the Von Erich, so, you know, they were partners with him. And so, yeah, yeah, it came from there. And, and it came from there. That's what it began with. always looked at, looked at as less than WWE, you know, by a lot of people. Nobody yeah, but it's knowing – Remembers the, Crockett for most – you know me. I'm just more of the. I'm the more of the traditional, era, a traditional. Thank but you. But I tell you, thank you. I t- because I, I that's you. where Can it came from. Can we agree to disagree on something? Okay. Go uh, ahead. Uh, agree. Let's agree on one thing though. Uh, because of evolution, woo, Space Mountain got reopened, baby. <laughs> hey. Space hey. Mountain. True. And enough. make the girls True cry. Enough. And make the girls cry. It got reopened because you know Ric Flair was getting more. You know no, what I'm no. saying? I, I said that earlier. Have you, you you heard what I said? I, oldest I, ride, longest, longest ride. ride. Longest <laughs> ride. <laughs> but yeah, time. no, I definitely agree. I, I, I'm not saying it, it did not. It, it gave his mojo. Back. I, I'm just saying, did you see the rest of the four horsemen besides Ric Flair also getting inducted for their singles careers? Because I don't. But I see every member of Evolution get inducted for their singles career. I mean, you cannot. Okay, you can't compare. I don't, I don't, okay, I um, yeah, I'm gonna step what? in here there you go, Mike. because yes, I have a few things to say about all of this okay, go ahead. in a bit. <laughs> now, here we go. My top five, starting with the Shield at number five. Now, Ooh, in the time. Where it's easy to easy to be overshadowed by many great past factions, the Shield managed to stand on their own individually and as a group. If you want to talk about you know a faction that has world champions in it, the Shield is one of them, and they managed n- not just in one promotion but in multiple. Uh, you know, AEW and WWE, they have world championships. So that's my number five, The Shield. Number four. Number four is For Life with the NWO. To me, man, like Josh said, Josh did really say a lot of cool stuff about the NWO. Uh, And yes, I have an NWO shirt that I pull out once in a while, as I'm sure a lot of people. You cannot go to a wrestling event without seeing one of those shirts in any of its versions, different colors, uh, you, you'll always see one. Um, so, yeah, you know, and, and the Monday Night War really reached its climax, I feel, when the NWO was going on in WCW and everything that was going on in WWE. So that's my number four. Number three, the Bullet Club. To me, as a WWE guy to go into different stores and see Bullet Club shirts and not just those versions, but not the, not just the original, but mary, many variations of it was like, it was very, uh, it caught my attention. Like, Bullet Club, what's this? You know, and I, as I'm sure many different people, uh, it caught their attention, you know, that this faction from, not from WWE, that's from somewhere else in the world is causing this much of a it's getting a lot of attention uh 
we got Prince Devitt, you know, we got AJ Styles there. Um, and I believe Cody was, uh, was in there at a time also as young bucks. And it, it really, in, for me personally, in, introduced me to new faces, new names that maybe otherwise I probably wouldn't have, uh, learned about at the time. So number three, the bullet club, number deuce evolution okay here we go so yes the four horsemen did it first okay granted they were the innovators they were the ones that did it first great now if you take the nwo for example somebody else did it first also in japan but who did it better the nwo right hey, that's true so there is it just because it's first doesn't mean that it's always better now it's very very close they even share a member and for me growing up with it, it, the evolution was the four horsemen for a different generation Thank for you. me i can i can say that that i i hated you know uh, wearing suits as a teenager but after watching them, like, you know, being cool, not faces, being heels, uh, you're not supposed to be cheering for these guys. You know, they, they with the, the swag and all that, you know, it just made me go out. But I went to Hollywood Boulevard and bought three suits, you know, and uh, they had a good combo going at the time. And I was like, I want to be like them, evolution. Uh, so for a generation now, that that is what it is and 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 that i really i do think that it has a lot to do with it with kind of like a nostalgia thing and and for other people who grew up watching the horsemen it, you know it, it, that goes along with it but man you got batista you got randy orton uh you got triple h rick flair who's obviously in both of them um Batista's an Avenger, you know, he's in Hollywood movies, you know, he's in, he is in the highest grossing movie of all time, you know what I'm saying, you, you can't say that about, uh, in his plat his uh, rocket was this faction, we got to know these guys as individuals through this faction, and I think that the Four Horsemen was more Ric Flair and friends, this was this was hey we got these two guys right here who are going to be the the man in the future they predicted the future and they got it right so for that evolution number two and my number one pick which was kind of briefly mentioned and i think it's in matt's uh list there if i'm uh, we'll see is the click yes it's not officially a faction that came out on TV, but so much that happened because of this group. Uh, you know, you had members in WCW, you had members in WWE, and just the impact NWO that and happened. DX. I'm sorry? NWO and DX. NWO and DX. And man, I would not be surprised if they put everybody in the click in the Hall of Fame as a group. I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised at all. I wouldn't be surprised, yeah. So, you know, that way you get four Hall of Fame rings uh, in Ric Flair's hand. Uh, or, I mean, well, or whatever, whatever. But, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, like, uh, I, I uh, caught that. No, no. It, it would you know, it would be, well, Sean Triple Roman, H. No, yeah, Triple H will have two. Uh, three. Wait. You know, you got so one, Triple H would have three yeah, with Evolution, got, DX, and himself. Him, yeah, yeah, but they haven't inducted Evolutions yet. So it's like it's saying, oh, so right now it's DX, 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 Evolution, the Click, and himself. He'd have four if they yeah, got that. Four. Yeah, yeah. damn, that's but crazy. Scott Hall was will have three if that happens because Scott Hall will be right. the last three because he, he's, he's inducted by himself as Razor Ramon <laughs> and NWO, and then the Click that'd be three. Shaw Waltman will be having two. Kevin Nash will only have one. Not a two. Hey, Wait, Sean hey, Waltman is going in with NWO and yeah. DX. Yeah, he is. So if oh, the click already, happens, he, then yeah, it would be he, he three. Said, though, he, Sean Waltman already said he don't want to go in by himself, though. 
I watched his. Why the hell not? I don't know. He said he said he wouldn't feel comfortable up there on stage because he wasn't um, be one, like, two, three, kill. Nah, he just don't want all the spotlight. He said he don't want all the spotlight just on himself and to celebrate just him, you know. But he said he'll do it for if he's a part of a group. But he said he don't want to be inducted by himself, mm. which I don't. I don't. I think that's stupid too. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that's my list. Top right. five factions. Great, right. great well, minds think alike. Uh, alike. I'm on. I'm actually on <laughs> Ivan's side with it because because if you're talking about the the amount of champions, like I'm, I say it earlier, you got Sting, you got Jeff Jeff Jarrett, you have Chris Benoit. You got Eddie but, but I'm not. I mean, but not I'm not saying. Right, I'll yeah. be right back. You guys go ahead. <laughs> You got but, but I'm not saying amount of champions. Yeah. yeah. About Im impact, not just as a group, but individually also. Yeah, Benoit, because you know? Benoit had, had a pretty big impact and, and on the business. Jeff Jarrett, he owned TNA and did all I mean, that stuff. I mean, yes, Benoit did have an impact, but I wouldn't say it's the best. Impact. I mean, you know, I mean, before, you about, before the bad stuff. When you talk about the, the four horsemen, yeah. though, you should be talking about like the original members, though, right? Just that is the true. The, they're the ones in the Hall of Fame. Evolution didn't, well, other than the whole Jindrak thing, uh, Evolution didn't really change members. They didn't need to, right? They waited no, for they Batista. They waited. You know? And, and, then and the, think about Lex how Luger. many world titles that is together 16, uh, 14, 13, and six times. And all the other titles that they want to, I mean, come on. It's also the it's also the idea that your group could switch members out because before before that, like like kind of you can't kind of stay the same forever because like some people do do get old and retire, and there's newer versions and different incarnations. It allows for things like like Bullet Club to exist and, and NWO to exist to have different incarnations of them later on through the years. Because they brought back like another version of the NWO later on down the line. But like, but like I'm saying, like you seen when Evolution when they did come back yeah. in 2007, when they came back in 2014, they came back together. Yeah, I mean, there was no new members. That's very true. So I I mean, guess, they always like when they stuck, they always stuck together. It, uh, and like Mike said, like Mike said, it ain't about who done it first, it's about who done it better. About what? About what? About everything. Mike's right about everything. Right. Uh, <laughs> are you are you gonna put are you gonna pull out with Mr. Mike? Oh, oh I gotta say, I gotta, Who say was Mike, I gotta say Mike, great, great top five this week, brother. Great I, top five. What can I say? The champ uh, is we're here. Split, we're split fifty fifty <laughs> on this. No, 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 like look, like the reason why like yeah. Jesus Christ I'm Hey man, it's just two different generations, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the point. It is like I have to give credit where it's due. And which is a four horseman. They have to be. I I get both of you guys' point of view. I'm not disagreeing. But the one thing is that you cannot say, cannot say they did it better because it's two different generations. It's too different. You have to give credit to the, these individuals that began it. They gave the foundation for factions to begin, regardless if they didn't have much titles. Or it was Ric Flair and Friends, but they came together. Which it was. And, and but <laughs> it's incorrect because you have to go back to look at T.A. Magnum's history. Go back and look at also Arn Anderson's history as well by himself. So we're talking about Tony the original Blatcher. members, though. That, yeah, I'm talking about the original members. I'm talking about the original members. Go back and look at their individuality history. And it makes sense why Ric Flair had them together in the first place. But Ric Flair wanted to be the world champion himself all the time, though. That's fine with that. But guess you what? You Triple H, though, he wanted to be the world champion all the time, but still Orton and Batista. But remind you that Ric Flair lost the belt to T.A. Magnum with Joe at the time. They were, like, part of the Horror Horsemen at the time. And, like, even prior before that, like, T.A. beat Ric Flair for the, for the NWA championship. So, but I thought the, the original Four Horsemen is like, um, what is it, Odie Anderson, Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard, JJ uh, Dillon. But JJ but Dillon. did yeah. None but did Motorhead titles. did Motorhead make their theme song? There you go. Uh, I rest. Uh, I rest. Uh, I rest uh, my case. Uh, who did they come out? Oh, they come out. They come, their music was not even as good as Evolution, man. You can't say that was. I like that. I like that. Oh no. <laughs> 
I'm gonna be comparing top them. five theme songs coming all right, soon. All right, uh, what, what, all right I'm ready for my five, my top five. Okay, okay. All right, all right. I want to hear this. You know, all right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm gonna go five to one, and the last one's gonna is gonna be the ultimate swerve. So, so my number, f- so my number five is Taiguchi Japan, and that's actually Hiroshi Tanahashi's faction with Taiguchi. Yep, I was, to recall that. Yeah, who's Finn Balor's. Taiguchi was Finn Balor's partner, yep. and who was known as Prince Devitt at the time. See. And they're really an underrated babyface faction. They don't get mentioned enough in New Japan. And they've, they have a lot of different members. They have, you know, they've got Juice Robinson. They've got Togi Makabe. They've got, Ta- of course, Mr. Taiguchi. They've got Tanahashi. They have Toru Yano, David Finlay. They used to have Michael Elgin. They had Kushida. They had um, they had Ricochet in the group, so it's it's they're just a great they're a great babyface faction. Number four, we mentioned them earlier, and I'll mention them again because of just the impact they've had on wrestling in the past so many years across all promotions. Bullet Club, I think one person we didn't men- I th- I didn't mention is uh, you could kind of think. That when the Wednesday Night Wars began, it, you had Bullet Club on both channels, on both matches. Because you have Adam Cole on the NXT match on one channel, and then you have Cody on the other channel. So you have, you have Bullet Club on both ends of the, of the spectrum. And then you've got AJ on, uh, what is it, SmackDown? You got AJ Finn on Balor on NXT. And Phil, Finn Balor on NXT. They got and the so Gallows many, and Anderson are about to be an impact. So yeah, so many, so many well, Bullet not? Club members across almost all promotions, and you know all the different incarnations of them. You know all the because which don't forget Marty Scroll from our Ring of Honor. Marty Scroll from Ring of Honor. That's true too. And in addition, in addition to that, if you guys don't know where the term the Bullet Club actually came from, is because Prince Devitt used to be known as the Straight Shooter. Yep. And Carl yep. Carl Anderson was the machine yes. gun. Yes. So hence, why hence why the name came about Bullet Club. Yeah. Wasn't it called shooter. something else in uh, CMLL? Finn Balor. I mean Prince Devitt or Carl Anderson. Oh no no the Bullet Club before it started it was called something else. In CMLL that's where the idea came from I think. It, I believe I can't remember what the fuck it was called. Are you talking about Perros del Mal? Perros del Mal. Ah, no, I don't, that don't sound familiar. Man. I think it started with O. Oh, I can't remember. Maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. But right. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So number three, we mentioned this one earlier. Los Ingobernables de Japón. So very great. I think I listened to this other podcast, and these girls refer to it as like goths. Oh. Like despite it, it's like it's like Mexican goths <laughs> in Japan. <laughs> but like so, some, I mean. Shingo Takage isn't as much of a goth as the rest of them, but like they got cool, they got cool style, and kind of like a funny idea. I kind of wanted to see um, Tetsuya Naito on. There's this one Japanese reality show called Terrace House, and it's kind of like the real world. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to see Tetsuya Naito on it, just because he would be. He would, like whenever there would be drama on the show, he'd just be like, "Tranquilo, tranquilo." Man, I love it. I love it. And people, by the way, you YouTube him. Like him speaking Spanish, I love it because he is hilarious in Spanish. But uh, let me let me let me just input this right quick, and I apologize to interrupt. But I just wanted to go ahead and say, doesn't England obviously help on it remind you just a tiny little bit? If you see the movie Clockwork Orange, right? Oh yeah, yeah. it kind of reminds you of that bunch of rebels. But you see how it was; they had the different styles. Ready to tear up the city, exactly. And that's what they did to rage, rage terror to New Japan. Well, and I loved wh- it. The- the way somebody described Tetsuya Naito, they said he's he's supposed to be like a rogue character. They they talk about how he works as a character and how characters like him work in the ring is that he's a rogue, and it's really hard to put them with a group. So you need a very kind of you need very free spirited kind of rogue guys exactly. to with them. Because in New Japan, their kind of rule is that you have to be aligned with some kind of faction. Yep. You know, even when Mo- John Moxley went to New Japan, they needed to give him like a buddy. So they gave him Shota Umino, who he nicknamed Shooter. Yep. And Shota Umino is Red Shoes Umino, the famous referee, is, a, is his son, who is a current young lion. So yeah. They, need, yeah. In, they need to give you a buddy 
You know, you're never, you're never going to be by yourself in New Japan. Somebody's always got to get your back if you're wrestling there. They're going to put you with it, somebody. It, it's with New Japan. New Japan, they, they have more respect with kayfabe. And mm-hmm. you could, and New Japan, they respect that. They keep that tradition going. And they have the tradition of kayfabe being how, we, you know, in the States is no longer, it's already obsolete. But in New Japan, they have the kayfabe is very different. It's very different in the States. And they take it seriously. And, like, usually the stables all, like, they ride together. They sleep in hotels together. They spend all, just like how they did in the territories days. And, yep. and the, like, everybody, like, heels and baby faces. Uh, like, um, what was the name? Uh, the name, Minoru Suzuki, Suzuki-gun. Oh, like they, Su- Suzuki-gun. Yeah, they're not on my list, but they're, I mean, I'll, honorable mention, because, but, but once again, back to Ingo Bernables. Los Ingo Bernables de Japón, because the way Tetsuya Naito, he's a rogue, you know, he's not meant to be, like, dominant. He's meant to be, like, an underdog. He's meant to be, like, an underdog that you cheer for, like, you know, the lone rebel. Yeah. So, you know, he's not, he's not always just, du- like, like a god like Okada. He has to be, like, the guy on the streets that you're cheering for to, to come up in there. Yeah. So, my number two, the N W. Oh, so for life. So the two two things that I really wanted to mention was when Hulk Hogan in his book, in his biography book, said he when there was talk about the idea of the NWO, he didn't even know he was going to be in it. Eric Bischoff visited him in his trailer in Hollywood. And it's like, I heard you're trying to make a, like a bad guy faction, this NWO. You were thinking of making it sting or, or is it going to be me? And then he look, Eric Bischoff just looks Hogan in the face and Hogan's like, Oh crap, it is me, isn't it? <laughs> and so. See, Hogan's full of shit on that. I'm, I, I, as much as I respect Hogan, but he's full of shit. He bullshits a lot of his autobiography. <laughs> He's he fucking said, full of shit. He I'm said he was right scared. Now. He said he was scared too that he night to turn heel. He is full of shit. Oh, you know he bullshits a lot, bro. He's like, the that, biggest yeah. bullshit in the world, man. <laughs> I, I love I, look, I, look, I love Hogan. That's why. That's death. how he got where he is. Bullshit people. <laughs> yeah, he, he said he said he was so, like the second he was walking out to the ring, it's like, oh my god, they're gonna tear me apart the second I drop that leg. Hell no, because he. He knew it was in the cell. He knew that. He gave he he gave that one story in the autobiography. If you look at his other ones that he did in the interviews, yeah, he keeps changing shit. it. He's full of oh, shit. Like, oh yeah, we have the plan, brother. We have the plan, brother, right away. Mm-hmm. So yeah, NWO and 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 uh, for the Wolf Pack, you know, it was it was interesting where their alignment was for the NWO Wolf Pack because like they had Sting, Lex Luger, and you Conan, know, Conan. And K Dog, K Dog, I mean K Dog. It's it's K-Dog. somewhere and it was somewhere between um it was somewhere between babyface and heel, because you know, you have Sting who, you know, he almost never turns heel and he doesn't like to. He's never thought of it. He just per- always prefers to be a baby face. So that was just kind of a cool thing seeing like like Sting aligned a certain way and just kind of like, you know, representing the colors and throwing up the signs. Sting right. coming out to hip hop music. That was <laughs> like, if you know the, what those guys are like personally, it, it's it's somewhat funny and kind of a juxtapose. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Badass that, fucking song, are you, though. Are you guys ready for my number one? Drum roll. Ooh. Mike, drum roll. The swerve. Mm-hmm. It's funny that I use the word swerve in this because this is somebody who's known for swerves. That's one clue. Uh oh. Let's go ahead and say it. Sports Entertainment Extreme. Ah. Okay. All right. Let's wait, wait, do you know who they are? You guys don't know who they are? I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you. Vince Russo's faction from TNA. Oh, you know what? I'm fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. ah. Oh, man. Ah. <laughs> Ultimate Swerve. <laughs> Wait a minute! Wait a minute! I've never even heard of that. from TNA. Yeah, they were the first really dominant heel faction. I gotta wait for Ivan to come back on so I can explain why. He went to go get a drink. Is what he did. Ladies gentlemen, I'm gonna have to go with this. 
because somebody just pissed me the hell off. <laughs> he will literally put them number one. Uh, yeah, of man, all kinda, time? That's kind of fucked here's, up, bro. And here's, here's the reason why. Here's the reason why they're my, my favorite faction. Because of the fact that it was like half shoot, half work. And nobody had any idea that that it, it really ain't like when I was watching it, it really angered me. I really wanted the good I really wanted the baby faces to defeat. I, I mean, let me ask you right quick. What year did this happen? Like this was because like I've been watching two, since two thousand two and I never saw him. Sports uh, at SEX. Russo was there and then he created his faction right after that. Yeah, was uh, stupid in who was in there. So AJ Styles was in it, uh Christopher Daniels was in it. A lot okay. of a lot of people, a lot of different people, and sports entertainment extreme was basically Jeff Jarrett thing. too. Don't forget Jeff Jarrett because he was part Jeff of it. They now, even had the Rock the and Roll. Ex- what, what was they the had the Rock and Roll that? Express in it. There was even an episode where the Rock and Roll Express was like, "I think it's time for a change," and they're wearing SEX shirts. Basically, oh. Russo was trying to create his version of WCW style of bringing the new generation up. And he did it with TNA the same shit. That's and what he did. And the, it was fucking ridiculous. Hey, much love to Russo, though. He followed me on Twitter the other day. Yeah, so, go ahead. My ass. I don't follow him. He kissed my ass. SEX. SEX, the, one of the reasons why is because I really wanted the baby faces to win every time. It turned to our truth was like Sting, basically. And it made me root for the traditionalists. Like Dusty Rhodes had matches against SEX where Dusty Rhodes was like, no, I stand for tradition. We've had Harley Race. We've had Ric Flair. But you, you Vince Russo, pr- push a midget jacking off in a trash can. You know, you guys have stupid and, – and it made me want to cheer for the good guys. And then Father, Father James Mitchell, you know, you guys, you guys know him too. Yes, uh, I know. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, Father James Mitchell and, like, his evil disciples, everybody, they were heels at the beginning – and everybody was cheering for them. Like, it turned them babyface because everybody was against SEX, you know. And then there was the Roddy Piper promo on them. Oh, yeah. And, and, and you know, and you know, that one was like, you know, rest in peace, Piper. I love him. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that promo. Yeah. I was really, saying, you, told, you, killed, look- you killed all of them. You killed my cousin. Yeah, which I remind that. you, remind you. That Roddy Piper is related to Bret Hart. They're cousins. Mm-hmm. People don't, just don't know that. They're not their fifth, fourth or fifth cousins. Uh, his right. real name, his real last name, Tombs. Yeah, the, and, Tombs. Yeah. So yeah. Ro- Roddy, Roddy technically is a Canadian wrestler. Yes, he is. So yeah. So he, it was, was, he was trained by Stu Hart, by the way, too. So I watched. I watched. I watched that first run. I watched that on on Ida Black Box, and I watched that promo. And when I was watching it, I was like, oh, my God, you know, this is deep. Like, like I was still a mark at the time. I was, like, 13 years old. And I was watching in my parents' room, and I was, I was just believing the whole thing. And I was like, maybe he did kill him. Like, I want, I want SEX to go down. I want them to be defeated. I need the good guys to win in this. So that's kind of like, – that was the profound effect they had on me. Like, they were, they were who I wanted to see get defeated. I wanted to see them destroyed, you know, and no – no group has ever like generated that kind of like real like that real hatred from me that I wanted to see them lose. You know, it's like, man, who are these guys making wrestling like? These guys are so sleazy. These guys are so corrupt. You know, you know, and the, and they're just and they're ruining everything. I didn't even know who Vince what Vince Russo was at the time. Like, I was only like I was only twelve. I didn't even know who this guy was. So I was seeing all like the Harris brothers. And all of them, I was like, man, like it feels, it's like a disease infected that whole company and they were trying to get rid of it, you know? And I never got to see the end of the angle. That was the Me other neither. thing. I know yeah. it, it died out because um, of what, what I recall. They fired what, Vince, I think? No, 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 not yet, not yet, not yet. Because they changed management. Because at the time, Pan, Panda Energy was already losing already their shares and they were they were ready to sell. Russo was still there and Cornet was there and then Bruce Pritchard was there. And see Cornet had to work with, with Russo at the time before Bruce before Bruce Pritchard came. But obviously Cornet obviously he opened Dixie's eyes, whatever like he's fucking shit up. 
and this is not working. Obviously, the ratings wasn't that great. People thought it was. No, it was. It's the same fucking bullshit what it was in WCW when he did, when he had his faction, when he had his new, new generation, blood. His the new, new blood. blood, the new blood. Same yeah. bullshit. And it's like, that's so you know that he lost himself in professional wrestling. And ever since after TNA, where do you went after that? Nowhere. Back home, sitting down, and whatever. He now became a reborn Christian. I'm not hating he, on but He, he started about some kind of like I'm Christian. Just, no, no, he yeah. started like a Christian wrestling league of Ring of yeah, Glory. Yeah, that's what I heard. And I'm like, Russo, get, you don't belong in, in professional wrestling. No. <laughs> you do not. I'm not hating Russo of what he created, the ideas for Vince, but what I hate about it, what he, what he made it, like, he made it a clown show. He made it, he, I, I agree, I'll, but damn, what anybody says, I'm still going to say it. I'm, I'm with Piper. He did a kill over, bottom line. He That's did. what I'm saying, bro. You have, you might have a few good ideas, like, years and years ago, but that don't mean you could still do it. Yeah. Just like Bischoff, it's same with, same with Ru Russo. It's like lightning only strikes once or twice. Yeah, maybe. I yeah, mean the lightning. Some people, some people. Yeah, the lightning only struck once, twice when he had you know he was really infatuated with Sable. He made Sable what she was known. She wasn't a professional wrestler. She was never trained until Tom Pritchard, Bruce Pritchard's brother, trained her to yeah, she's get a along with that. Only. She's more of a model, gold figure. You know the same. Sunny was she wasn't trained at all, but you know she was more of a role model figure. She wanted to be like the you know like. Semi. Cornette built her up. Cornette really like helped Sonny out. Like he did his, because yeah. he had her smoking mouth and wrestling. So we could go all the way back to that. Yeah, Tammy's but, tips. Yeah. But I cannot, man. This is like the <laughs> fucking bullshit top five I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I just don't know SCX. how that could be your number one, man. Because What's so this? many, because because I hated one? them so much. Because I hated them, and I really wanted to see them lose. I wanted to see them get. Like, no group has ever made me want to see them be destroyed like they do. That's, like, that's kind of what I want to see out of a faction. I want to see, like, usually when I see a faction, I want to see the good guys get rid of them. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the main thing I wanted to see. I wanted to see Jeff Jarrett pin their champion and then them do, like, what do you call it? Whoever, loser leaves town matches for everybody on the, on the roster. That's what I wanted to see. So that's kind of why... You know, I can't under, I, I, I can't yeah. understand. I can't understand why you chose it because it, it intrigued you, because it, yeah. now made, it made you watch, like to watch it because you're like yeah. I'm interested because you hate these guys. Like you're looking for the the, the baby faces to dethrone them. That's what you're looking. For. And the baby faces don't have to be on the same team. They need don't need to be aligned. They just need to be fighting. Yeah, yeah no, guys no. and getting rid of them. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, agreed, because it, it's kind of like how. Josh and Mike and my, you know, myself, we said it when, when the time we hated Triple H, like when he was by himself, remember like oh, how we hated yeah. him? Like Fuck damn, Triple H by Fuck him at the time, he was, a, he was a baddest heel, it got to us. And that's the point. K-Fabe is supposed to be that point, and it got to us, and we loved it. But I, I was just surprised that you chose them number one, but I, I, I guess that was your number one, but. And I wanted to, me, it, it, me. Made, it made our truth Probably when he was was the Ron the Truth killings, he was like he was like Sting fighting the NWO. He was like high, sitting in the rafters, you know, silent, you know, it was like by himself. It was like our truth needs to save us from sports entertainment extreme. Like this guy's this guy was a baby face who's here to like, and he was do cutting these like really like emotional promos on them. Like these guys held me back. They don't know. What's right? Like he was, like he was also getting into my heart. Like Ron Truth was like almost crying in his promos. But like, I, I tell like, you, I need what, to destroy if them. Going, if I was going by that, who pissed me off the most? Like I'd probably pick right the censor or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Okay, right now let's just do, we'll, we'll, we'll do it right now. We gotta we we just gotta have one honorable mention. So. Uh, we, I mean, there's so many fashions we enjoyed and then we hate it. So Dude, we have to get at least get, <laughs> So, I mean, all right, Mr. Here, I'll go with you. Your honorable mentions. Uh, did I hate it or? Oh, it doesn't I... matter. Like, do you want to give him credit when credit is due? Hate or love that made you intrigued or how you felt huh. about it? Let's be honorable mention. What honorable mention? Jesus. Uh... 
I don't know why this is coming up, but uh, TNA, Test and Albert. I don't know why that's coming up. <laughs> I, like, make us a make us a Trish Stratus. I I, I don't know. I, that, that, I'm, I'm surprised see, you didn't pick I the X Factor. A, if I, knew I thought about that too. A faction like that, like with a woman, like I thought that's considered the manager or something. I, I probably would have like thought about picking Team Extreme. Okay. Oh, yeah, that works. I I I would consider that affection. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, all right, Josh, who who do we choose? Oh man, you know I just have to go with with a great honorable mention here. You know, uh, led by the great American hero himself, Kurt Angle, Team Angle. You know, that's a good uh, one. Uh, yeah, hey, you know what, Benjamin and Charlie and Haas. Have, and, and, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Benjamin and Charlie Haas, and wow, man, the world's greatest tag team. Tag I'm not. Team and, Champion. Self-proclaimed. Dalton's really good in Japan. No, you know what? Honestly, no, 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 no. And, and well, we fucked up on that, and we should have mentioned them on the best tag team because they deserve to be there. Honestly, why? Because Shelton and Charlie Haas, they, you know, they they were phenomenal in WWE. We saw them. That's Team Angle. They won a tag belt in RH. People don't remember that's that. That's right. That's right. They did. And, and they busted their ass off. And and New Japan as well. Like, hey, Charlie Haas is an underrated wrestler. So it should be the Haas of credit. pain. The Haas of pain. The ha- yeah. yeah, yeah. Should be credited where his credit is due. And Shelton Benjamin, those, those were two great phenomenal athletes. And I love them. I love the fact that they, they paired them with Kurt Angle because it made all sense. It made a lot of sense for me. And I loved it. Kurt Angle, ladies and gentlemen. It's true. It's damn true. damn true. There you go. All right, but MGC, who's your honorable mention? Um, you know, I, I don't know enough about them, and I kind of wanted to ask everybody what they thought about that. Well, I don't think I have them yet. Let me think. Okay, well, so, because I was going to ask you guys about the ne- Nexus. I don't know that, that much about them. Oh, my God. Yeah, I didn't really yeah, watch yeah. around the time they came out, and I don't really know anything. What do you guys all think of Nexus? So much potential that. wasted. Yep. Thank wasted you. potential, bro. He's wasted. right. Yeah. I, I I'm I'm with my I'm with my right here with my brothers. Look at look at all of them now. Only one still there is what? Daniel Bryan? Maybe Otunga's an announcer or some shit. But I don't even know if he's still there, is he? No, he's gone. Okay, so what? Daniel Bryan's the only one left? There's only one left. Wasted. Out of ten fucking people. That's attrition basically, you know, and all of that. But if you really think about it, like out of everybody, the, like the Nexus. Oh, Bray. Well, if you want to count, oh, if you want to count. About the White family, man. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not counting. Uh, I'm not um, counting Bray, Husky I'm, Harris. I'm not counting how, how Husky Harris or or Michael McGillicuddy. Oh, no, yeah. No, no, oh my. No, that, <laughs> that was the about OGs. worst. I'm talking about the OGs, the, the original ones. Oh, okay. And Axel and 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 Brody Lee, who used to be Luke Harper. No, no, he wasn't in the original one because it, it was. No, no, he's talking about the white. It was Heath, Heath Slater, uh, Ryback, um, freaking British guy, um, Michael Tarver, uh, Darren Young, the uh, Justin Gabriel, PG Justin Bryan. Gabriel, Gabriel, yeah, Rob, Daniel uh, Bryan, yeah, Daniel Bryan, Wade Barrett, Wade Barrett, and Wade Barrett. I think um, out of all of those seven. Uh, Trevor, I thought there was 10 of them. No, seven of them. Could be but, mistaken. Huh? But if you realize the ones that would have made an impact would have been what she did, which was Heath Slater was one, PJ Black, which is Justin Gabriel, is another one. They did a great tag team. I liked it. That was pretty great. Um, obviously, Wade Barrow was a great heel. He should have won the championship. They could have gone more further oh, with that. No doubt. that. That would have been a great heel faction with that because it would have made more sense because they would have thrown the them – Taking over the WWE Championship and then WWE, like the, kind of like the Alliance 2.0 in a way, like just to throw mm-hmm. in the Nexus. So way, way, way better would have been a great champion. Uh, Daniel Bryan, obviously, which I'm happy because I'm a big fan of him, the American Dragon. Daniel Bryanson, I'm a big fan of him. Uh, Bryback, he was okay for me. I, I don't, it was kind of a good thing Daniel was, Bryan got fired, though. Yeah. Worked okay, out better I, for him. I think that was just my question was Nexus, but I guess my honorable mention will probably be the Dungeon of Doom. Um, what do you? What's you guys take on the Dungeon of Doom? Silly. 
the Dungeon of Doom. I'm trying to think. Uh, Kevin reminded Sullivan. It was uh, the giant. Uh, oh, Kevin Sullivan. Oh, man, that's Kevin the Sullivan. Yeah, Kevin Sullivan. You're talking about Kevin Sullivan, man. That's the shittiest faction in wrestling history, almost. Besides <laughs> <laughs> the fucking Spirit Squad. <laughs> they had, didn't they have Vader, too? They had Vader also. They did have Vader and Sid Vicious. Yeah, Vader and Sid Vicious. It was like early WCW. There's one faction that is supposed to be honorable for me that I will give, and people sleep on it, is the L W. Oh, oh, Latino yeah. World Latino Order. Latino World Damn Order. Good I've been wanting to get that shirt. Me too. I want to get that shirt. Juventud Guerrera. Um... The Chavo, Eddie, uh, was it? Eddie was the leader. Yeah. Eddie was the leader. Great fucking faction, Ray bro. Mysterio, yeah. um, Ray, Ray Mysterio. Ray Mysterio. Ray Mysterio. Was Ray Mysterio in it? Later on. Okay, yeah. Psychosis. Yep. Psychosis. Uh, La Parca. Yep. Yeah. Damien 666. Ray Bucanero. They had almost everybody from Sweet Blood and uh, Consejo Mundial involved in that. And I love how Eddie... I like the vignettes what they had. <laughs> like, it was amazing. I loved it how he pulled it off. Eddie did I a great job with that. And and you know what? And that's what's missing. You know, Mike and Josh and I had this this, this debate off off the air mm. about it's we. I want Ray to be healed. I want him to bring right now this current roster that they have. Okay, make Ray as a faction, Selena, yeah. uh, Selena as you know herself, like you know, and then Andrade be there with him. Obviously, Angel Garza. Who else do you want to bring into that? Humberto Carrillo, like bring like the Lucha the Lucha House Party, Callisto too, and like. Ray will be a great example of the Eddie Guerrero of the LWO, his own version, to bring a movement, the Latino movement, and go with it. And oh my God, they will turn the house down. And it won't, it will not be a joke because they should be taken seriously. Because right now, how this era, how it is, what's going on with, you know, gentrification and, you know, racial profiling, like, can twist it a little bit, but make it, you know, if you want to win Latinos, viewers, that's the way to do it. Honestly, that's the way to do yeah, it. Yeah, man, they own, WWE owns all these fucking names and shit. Don't even use them. Man. That's stupid. Bring it, fucking, bring it back. I, that was really one of the things that made WCW special was the that combination of those cruiserweights and the, and the luchadors. Bruce, Bruce, what the fuck are you doing? Tell your fucking pop up video to do something about it. <laughs> Is that Bruce? Is that Bruce? <laughs> yeah, that was Bruce. T t tell him uh, dude love sucks. No, wait, what was it? Brother love. <laughs> brother love. Tell we him love brother love sucks. Love. Love, dude love. <laughs> we love dude nah, love. We love dude love. We love dude love. Much love, sir. It was like dude love had this thing. Dude love is like cheap toilet paper. Because he doesn't <laughs> take shit off of anybody. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, hey, that's a good point. He doesn't give a shit about it. But all right, man, this tops it up right now, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate you guys for tuning in for our top five factions for week nine here on Super Debate. So next week, as you heard it on Friday, you heard episode nine. We discussed that we're going to have top five extreme hardcore wrestlers. So we're going to have an extreme shout out and episode. 10, numero 10, yes, finally, we finally hit double digits, ladies and gentlemen, double digits. Then we're going to hit that on next Friday, so stay tuned. Don't forget that we're here every Friday, 5 o'clock Pacific Center Time, 8 o'clock Eastern. We're here every Friday for you guys, and Sunday, 8 o'clock Pacific Center Time, and obviously uh, 11 o'clock Eastern Time. So make sure you guys tune in every Friday, Sunday, Friday, Friday. Not nah, episode 10 and next Sunday, which we're gonna go ahead and talk about top five of our five top extreme professional wrestlers, extreme hardcore, extreme, extreme. championship. But bum bum, bum, bum <laughs> but yeah, 
But stay <laughs> tuned, ladies and gentlemen, once again. This is your host, I this is the Devious One, alongside with the Christian Killer, Josh Brady Horton, the American hero that holding the that precious World Heavyweight Championship along with his shoulder right there, the American hero, Mike Lopez, and also the studio of magic over here, the studio of all studio, the two sweet MGC, Mr. Matthew Karateja. We're all saying to you guys, good night. Well, not good night, well, good day. And um, we'll see you Salud. next. We'll see you next Friday. Salud. And next Sunday. Cheers, gentlemen. Cheers.